Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanu Gagodya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to Maharaj Anandya Tidandi Padgan and to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. By the causes mercy of Sri Guru and Gauranga, we have been celebrating the most auspicious event of Guru Purnima, the appearance day of Srila 
श्री कृष्ण जो है पायन वेद व्यास but that day is also the disappearance day of Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad. Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad ki We are or we aspire to be Rupa Nuka to follow outwardly and eventually inwardly also Srila Rupa Goswami but Srila Rupa Goswami part has his Guru Dev his Prabhupada to whom does Srila Rupa Goswami refer to as Prabhupada Srila Sanatana Goswami so how exalted is Srila Sanatana Goswami Gaurangera Sangi Gane Nitya Siddha Kauri Mani Sei Jai Prajanta Sutta Pas How can you go to Goloka Vrindavan and into the presence and very, become very near and intimate to Prajanta Sutta, the son of Nanda Maharaj Krishna by honoring the associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Nitya Siddha They are his eternal associates as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears in this world, He is eternal Supreme Personality of Godhead, so His associates are His eternal entourage. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jivadar Gori Swapasha Dasuya Dhamma Saha Avatari Supreme Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of mercy, has appeared in this world along with His Dham and along with His associates. And very prominent among those associates is Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad. He is the incarnation of the elder sister of Rupa Manjari, that is Labanga Manjari. When the associates of Mahaprabhu appear in this world, through them, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives so many teachings which are valuable for us. If you want to attain nishta, steadiness in your practice, in your daily sadhana and services, if you want to attain nishta in your speech, that you steadily speak only about Krishna, not any mundane things. If you want to attain steadiness in your mind, that when you remember Gayatri Mantras and Chant Harina, that you become absorbed in your mantras. Hmm? That is Chitai Kagra. Chitai Kagra, one pointedness of the Chitta. Hmm? Then, if you then, so we have discussed three types of nishta: nishta in the bodily activities, nishta of the speech, and nishta of the mind. So, if you want to attain all these three types of steadiness, then you must show a great interest and fascination for Vaishnava Jivan Charitra. Jivan Charitra means the the life history of the Vaishnavas, their exemplary behavior, their character, their noble virtues and attributes which are all not of this world. The glories of the Vaishnava, they have humility, they have tolerance, they have self-satisfaction, they have all these qualities. These, those qualities are known in the world as being the qualities of Sattva Gun. But those same qualities in the Vaishnavas are not Sattvic at all. They are of Vishuddha Sattva. They are not detached from the world, detached from sense gratification. 
patient and humble and tolerant because of sattva guru, but because of Vishuddha sattva. Their vairagya, their detachment is only the concomitant or incidental, the side effect of Vishesh Rup Anurag. Due to their deep attachment for Sri Krishna, therefore they're detached from all the things of this world. So don't uh, compare the good qualities of a worldly person who has good qualities with the good qualities in the Jivan Charitra of the pure Vaishnavas. Thank you. All their qualities are of Vishuddha Sattva. And by hearing them, our life becomes auspicious. So I am praying to Gurudev and Srila Sanatana Goswami Pahat that they may sprinkle some mercy upon me because I am unable to express the greatness of Srila Sanatana Goswami but by his mercy perhaps we can touch one particle of dust from his lotus feet. Sanatana so Goswami Pad was born in the year 1488. And his family, actually since the time of his grandfather, whose name was Mukunda, Mukunda was engaged in the service of the Muslim kings of Gaudadesh. And so, um, that um, so those services were inherited and also Snarin Goswami he was a very brilliant person so he, he was not only a servant in the government but by his great tactfulness, diplomacy and intelligence in practical matters he was gradually elevated and became the Prime Minister the main minister of Nawab Hussein Shah, the Emperor of Bengal his younger brother, whom we know as Rupa Goswami, he was also in, uh, elevated to a very high position in the government as a personal secretary. Um, so, Sanatan Goswami Pad, that name, that time he did not have that name, he was known as Sarkar Malik, Sarkar Malik, which means Prime Minister. And Rupa Goswami was known as Dhabir Khas. Special Secretary. So, when he was young, he was studying under one of the greatest scholars of that time named Vidya Vajaspati. And in Bhakti Ratnakar it says there are no words to describe how that young Vaishnava was dedicated to his Gurudev Vidya Vajaspati. And because of this, he received all blessings and was filled with knowledge, especially he liked to study Srimad Bhagavatam. The two brothers were living in the village called Ram Keli. So Ram Keli is a very beautiful village on the border of Bengal. And there, Rupan Sanatan had made kuns, Shama kund and Radha kund, and the Govardhan. <coughs> they had created an atmosphere like Brindavan. <coughs> Though they were born in a very high class Brahmin family, their ancestors originally were from Karnataka in South India. They were uh, Karnataka Saraswat Brahmins. But because they had accepted service in, of the Muslim king, they considered themselves completely fallen, out of caste. Especially Sanatan Goswami considered himself even lower than the Muslims. He, he, his father, Sanat Goswami's father, was so strict that every time he saw a Muslim, then he would go and do some atonement rituals afterwards. He 
was a very strict Brahmin. But Rupa and Sanata, they actually adopted the address and outer behavior in the court of, of the king. So they considered themselves to be completely, that they have completely lost their caste in their humility. Rupan Sanata had heard about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they were writing letters to him. They were writing backwards and back and forth to each other. So after Mahaprabhu had accepted the renounced order and was staying in Jagannath Puri for some time and he completed his tour of South India, then he decided to set out to Vrindavan. And on the way to Vrindavan, he came through Navadvip and gradually he arrived at the village of Ram Keli. So, on Mahapu's first attempt to go to Vrindavan, he had many associates with him. Nityananda Prabhu, Silaharidas Thakur, Mukunda Morari, Vakrashra Pandit. And he was doing kirtan through the villages. And hundreds and thousands of people were following him everywhere he went. So at that time, the local Muslim magistrate, the Kazi, he was thinking, who is this person? Perhaps he, he may try to make a, a revolution, an uprising of Hindu nationalism against our government. And he had some envious thoughts towards Mahaprabhu. So the news came to the Nawab, Nawab Hussein Shah. And he inquired from one of his advisors, Keshava Katri, who is this person who is surrounded by so many people? Keshava Katri, he knew about Mahaprabhu and he wanted to downplay the situation. So he said, oh, he's, he's just a, a saint and there's not so many people with him. We shouldn't concern ourselves with this unimportant event. But then Nabu Hussain Shah, he inquired from Dabir Kas and Sakar Malik. Who is this person who is coming and attracting so many followers? Srila Rupa Swami Pad said, The Supreme Personality of God, who has blessed you with the throne of the empire of Gaudadesh. <laughs> that very same person has taken birth in Navadvip. And he's playing the role of a Gosai, a saint. So, why are you asking me who he is? Because you are the king. And the king is God's representative on earth. So you should ask yourself, if you look inside your heart and ask yourself, who is Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Then, whatever appears in your chitta, you can take that to be Pramaha. You can take that as authentic evidence. So then, now Hussain Shah, he closed his eyes and looked in his heart and then he said, yes, I fully agree. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of God. Rupan Sanatan told him that uh, your Kazi, the magic local magistrate, is somewhat envious and wants to make problems. So tell him to not disturb him in any way. So the Kazi, with great, sorry, the Nawa Hussein Shah, with great respect for Mahaprabhu, he told his magistrate not to make any problems. So in Ram Kelly, Mahaprabhu was in one place where there's a Kadamba tree and a Tamal tree. The Tamal tree and Kadamba tree are Udipana in Braj of Radha and Krishna because the Tamal tree is dark like Krishna's complexion and the Kadamba tree is bright like Radhika's complexion. And the, the Kadamba tree, if you want to make a swing, 
A jeweler? You should do it on the branches of the kadamba tree because it's very strong. So the kadamba tree is stronger than the tamal tree. It shows that Radhika has more love than Krishna. So there was a tamal tree and a kadamba tree and Mahapu was sitting there. And thousands of people were there. And Rupan Sanatan, not Rupan Sanatan yet, Dabir Kas and Sakar Malik, they set off and they came there. And when they saw Mahaprabhu from far away, they began to offer Dandavat Pranam again and again with straw between their teeth. I mean, you know who has straw between their teeth? Dumb animals. <laughs> so taking straw between their knees, I am just a completely ignorant animal. With great humility, with tears in their eyes, they were in ecstasy. Finally, the Rupan Sanatan, Dhaka Sakarmalik, they were seeing Mahaprabhu for the first time in this Leela. And giving pranam again and again, they were offering prayers. Matul yo nasti pa patma na parari na kastana parihari pilajame kim bruve purshotana. Oh my Lord, there is no one more sinful than me. Oh my Lord, there is no one more offensive than me. I have many bad habits but i hesitate even to give them up so what can i say kim Bruve, what can i say to you purushottama supreme person in this way they were praying to Mahaprabhu. in bhakta ratnakari he said through rupa and sanatan chaitanya mahapu has taught the world Vaishnav humility. Rupan Sanatan prayed from the Yamuna Stotram of Yamuna Acharya. Bhavanta Mevanu Charam Nirantara Prashanta Nishesha Manora Tantara Kadaham Aikantiki Nityakinkara Prayasha Ishami Sanata Jivitam. Now uh, you remember. It means Bhavanta Mevanu Charam Nirantara. Oh when will that day come? When I will be Aikantiki, one pointed, Nitchakinkara. And every moment serving you. Kinkar means servant, but it comes from the word Kim Karomi. What will I do? What can I do for you? So when will I become one-pointed in your service? That service is such that prasada, nishesha, manohara, tantra, even though the mind is producing many desires, manorat. Manorat means the chariot of the mind. So many desires carrying us here and there in the material world. But prashanta nishesh, if we are fully engaged in service, then all the material desires become completely pacified. No more desires or attachments at all. Prayasya hisami sanata jivita. And not only will all my heart be peaceful and undisturbed by any worldly attachment, but I will also be overjoyed, full of jubilation. Why? Sanata Jivitam. Not because of my own qualities, but overjoyed thinking, how qualified is my master? A devotee should never be upset or disturbed about anything. A devotee should always feel joyful. Why? Because I have a chance to serve a master who is so incredible, so wonderful, so full of unlimited divine transcendental qualities. When we become mm, sad or depressed in any way, it means that we become completely selfish, self-absorbed. The mind is very narrow. Chitta has contracted and is concerned with some very local affairs, like what's happening to this body here. When the consciousness is fully expanded, 
Then, oh, there is only Supreme Lord everywhere. And He is wonderful. So nothing to be depressed or disturbed about it. The only joyful. So, Prayasya Isyami Sanata Jeevita. So Rupa Goswami, Saratana Goswami, they were bowing down again and again and offering these prayers. They said to Mahaprabhu, Oh Mahaprabhu, you have delivered Jagai and Madai. And to deliver Jagai and Madai was not a great exertion for you. You did it very easily. But we, we are much more sinful, much more fallen, much more wretched than Jagai and Madai. Hmm? Why? Because Jagai and Madai, they, they were only addicted to sinful activities. And all the reactions to sinful activities can be destroyed in one moment, only by Nam Abbas. So because Jagai and Madai spoke your name, even to criticize you, but still they were delivered by that. Hmm? But what is our position? <laughs> the king and his associates, they are killing brahmanas, killing cows. And we have become this. We are, we are not even as bad as cow killers and brahmin killers. We are the das and das and das of the brahmin killers. So we are most, most despicable. Oh my Lord, you are famous by the name of Patit Pava, one who purifies the fallen persons. So if you will not give your mercy to us, then we think it will be very difficult for you to find another candidate for causeless mercy. Because causeless mercy means the mercy which is given to the undeserving. So you will not be able to find another candidate like us. We are most undeserving. So they were crying and bowing down again and again. Oh Mahaprabhu! We have come here aspiring to receive your mercy. And in this regard, we are so pathetic, we are like a dwarf who is trying to touch the moon. If someone is very tall and they reach up, it's, it's impossible, they can't touch the moon. But if a dwarf is young enough, they are extra pathetic. So Rupa and Sanatan, they are expressing their mood in this way. Mahaprabhu said to them, Oh, you are my eternal servants. No one knows why I've come here to this village of Ram Kelly. But actually, I came here for you, just to meet with you. I am giving you the names Rup and Sanatan. So, so, Mahaprabhu has given them the, these names. This is very significant. It's called Namkaran, the samskar of giving a spiritual name. Don't consider that when you receive a spiritual name, that this is something unimportant or insignificant. Mm -hmm. You see, the process of diksha is called pancha sanskar. That means it is constituted of five uh, samskars, rituals. What does samskar mean? Sam means complete. And kar is from krita to, means to make or to form. So, for example, like the word Sanskrit comes from that. So, complete or per the complete or perfectly formed language is Sanskrit. So, we have vikriti. That means that our 
consciousness has become distorted. So the distortion, the vikriti of our consciousness has to be removed by the sanskriti. Hmm? That we become refined, that we become reformed, that we become redeemed. And it's done through sanskar. So sanskar is the name of the ritual and the ritual causes sanskar. It makes the pure impressions in our heart by which we naturally go towards the goal of our life. You see? In the conditioned state we have ku sanskar, bad impressions. All the desires that we have for worldly things are simply the echoes of past indulgence in sense gratification in a previous life. If you've done some sinful activity in a previous life, that experience was recorded in your chitta as a samskar. And now when you're walking through your life and you come in a situation which is similar to that previous situation, that impression is triggered. And from the subconscious mind, that impression comes into the conscious mind in the form of vasana, a desire. So our tendency to become engaged in sinful activities is the echo of sin, sins that we've done in the past. In this way, the sansar chakra is going around, the bondage in material existence. So by Vaishnava association, we receive new sanskars. Hmm? You know, if you go to the beach, it's all covered in footprints. Hmm? But when the ocean comes in and washes out like that, it's smooth again. So in the same way, our heart is full of so many material impressions. But when Gurudev's mercy comes like an ocean, hey, Kripa Sindhu Bevacha. Vaishnavas are like an ocean of mercy, it comes and washes away all those impressions and gives us new transcendental sanskars. Hmm? And those who have deep impressions of bhakti from this life and the previous life also, up to the stage of rati, they are the adhikaris, the ones who are qualified to experience bhakti rasa. Without the sanskars from this life and previous life, a person cannot have taste in Krishna bhakti rasa. So, in initiation, there are five sanskars. Srila Baladevi Dibhushan, Prabhu, in his Pramaya Ratnavali, he has written there, quoting from Shastra, Tapaha Pundram Tata Nama Mantro Yaga Chapancha Maha Amihi Pancha Sanskara Parama Ikanti Hei Tukaha Hei Tapaha the meaning is that there are five sanskars, impressions, which are the cause of Paramaikanti, supreme one-pointedness in devotional service. We want to come to the stage of complete absorption in devotional service without any distraction or inclination for anything else. And what's the cause of that? Five sanskars. And the first one is Tapa. Tapa means in the Vedic times the Guru will take a, a, a chakra and a conch, the marks of Vishnu, on, in iron and dip it in the fire until it was red hot and then say, okay, who's ready for initiation? <laughs> and burn the marks of the symbols of Supreme Lord onto the body of the disciple. In, actually, we're in the line of Madhvacharya, they still do this today. You can come every year, usually going to Uddhavi, you can come with this. And you can see, we often meet with the Acharyas there and other Vaishnavas, and you can see. They have to get it renewed also every year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is called Tapa. 
Tapa means burning. But you should understand it in this way. Srila Bhakti Thakur explained that Mahaprabhu is very merciful and there's no need to be branded in his sampradaya. Because the branding itself is an external symbol of anutap, regret. So the first stage of the process of initiation is anutap, that the guru tries to see if this jiva is regretful of his indifference to the Supreme Lord, that he has wasted his life. Amara jiva na sada papera tanahi ko Oh my Lord, I have wasted my whole life in sinful materialistic activities. So the first stage is to be full of regret. So tapa, then tapaha udva pundram. Udva pundram means Guru gives tilak. Ud, udva means going up, not going sideways like this. Urdva. The sideways one is for Shankarites, Shivites, Mayavadis. So Urdva pundra. So this tilak going up is another Sanskrit. The tilak is just a symbol that the person who is filled with regret, who is racked with remorse over his wasted human life, has turned away from mature activities. And now Urdva, he's looking up towards Goloka Brindavan. His ambitions are there, not here. No ambition here. No anchors here holding you back. Hmm? Cut that an anchor and be pointed in one direction to Goloka Brindavan. All our aspirations, all our desires are there. So Tapha Pundra Tata Nama. And the third Sanskar is Nam. That the spiritual master gives a new name. Nam Kana. So Chaitani Mapu gave the names You are Sanatan and You are Rupa. This is important. Why? Because it signifies that that previous person, whoever you, you were, Dabir Khas, Sakar Mali, Eduardo, hmm? Leonidas, George, Frederick, whatever, whoever you were, he's dead. Ram Nam Satyam. He's gone. And now you don't identify with your body, your caste, your creed, your country, your gender, anything. You identify only as because a name is given with Das. Krishna Das, Govinda Das, Gopal Das, Mahaprabhu Das. Like this. So, if a person does not accept a spiritual name, then they remain puffed up with the worldly identification. Hmm? Don't you know who I am? I went to Oxford University. I have a PhD in mechanical engineering. Look, here's my name on my credit card, Platinum. I have so many air miles. So this ego is there. So having a spiritual name is not an ordinary thing. But it means to completely detach, disconnect in all ways from one's previous identity and accept the new identity as Krishna's servant. Then the next uh, sanskar is mantra, mantra yagas chapanchada. One receives mantra Hare Krishna Maha mantra and Diksha mantras. And then the fifth sanskar is one learns the process of archan how to serve the deity. So all these five together will uh, make such an impression in the heart that one will be refined, reformed, redeemed, purified and actually become a Vaishnava. Just as 
Bell metal is transformed into gold by an alchemical process. So similarly, a person becomes, from being in the material condition state, becomes a transcendental, pure Vaishnava Brahman by the process of diction. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu gave the names to them. So then Mahaprabhu said, I could understand your nature and qualities from the letters that you wrote to me. So when you wrote to me, I wrote back to you. Do you remember what I wrote to you? Do you remember what Mahaprabhu wrote to him? Paravyasani ni nari vyagrapi griyakarmasu Tadeva aswadhyanta navarastsanga rasayanam this is very significant. Mahaprabhu had sent this verse to our dear most Rupa and Sanatan. It means Paravyasanini Nari. There was a woman and she was married. But she had secretly love with another man with whom she was not married. So Paravyasani ni nari vyagrapi and she is very very eager to meet with him. But this relationship she has to keep it completely secret. So what does she do? Vyagrapi, though she's eager to meet with him, Griyakarma Su. She does all of her housework perfectly. All the cooking, the cleaning all the services she does perfectly because if she were to become slacking them at once everyone would suspect it seems like you don't love your husband because the lady how she's dressing and putting on all the solar sringar 16 types of ornaments 16 types of cosmetics and 12 types of ornaments these are all these decorations are done for the out of chastity for the good fortune of the husband so she's doing everything and she's doing all her housework perfectly so that no one will suspect but as she's doing all that housework perfectly in her heart at every moment she's relishing Navarasa a newer and newer relishment of meeting with her beloved in the heart. So, why did Mahaprabhu send this verse to Rupa and Sanatana? Two things. It has an external meeting, meaning and an internal meaning. The general meaning is that Apana Bhajana Kata Nakaibo Jatatava Srila Narutanda Stakura said the discussion about my internal life, my own bhajan, I will not speak here and there. Your internal life, you should keep it internal. This is the nature of the neophyte. Their mind is so unsteady, the moment the slightest realization comes, oh, they feel like they're on a boat that's about to capsize, and it all comes out of them, oh, oh, oh. and they tell someone, oh, this experience. And then the next thing they know, when they try to chant, their heart is dry like a desert. And chanting is like eating a bowl of sawdust. This is no taste at all. So, Mahaprabhu's, sorry, Rupa Goswami's first teaching that he received from Mahaprabhu. CC Radhakaranda Jyoti Jai. Vacho Vegam. Control the urge to speak. Hmm? Anubhuti, realization is like camphor. Camphor should be kept in a box with the lid on it tightly. Hmm? The Pujaris know. If you unscrew the lid or leave the lid off or leave it loose, next time you come, all your camphor is gone. It evaporates into the air. So we have to keep the lid on our bhajan. Whatever realization is coming, 
you should keep it inside and it will grow and it will grow. And if one will have a loose tongue, it will disappear and then it may be a long, long time before any more realization will come. But, also, another side, if one has the association of a very high class advanced Rasik Vaishnava, Shiksha Guru, and one may express something, not directly, because the Rasik Vaishnava can understand. Just by a hint, you may say something and they can confirm something also. So Rupa Goswami has said, Dadati Pratigrinati Kuyam Akyati Prichati. There are six exchanges of love between Vaishnavas and two of them are revealing the heart in confidence and inquiring confidentially. Hmm. So, though the rule is everything we should keep inside, but something can be said and little expression can be there and then appropriate guidance will come from very advanced Rupanuga Bhava Prasip Vaishnav Guru. So this is the first thing. Raganuga Bhakti is very confidential. Outwardly the devotee should follow all the regulations of Vaidhi Bhakti. Hmm? Don't think, now I am in Raga Maharaj, so there's no need to go to Mahabharata. Now I have spontaneous devotion, no need to chant a fixed number of rounds every day. No. Sankhya Purvaka Nama Gananati Bhika Lavasani Kato Nidrahara Viharat Adi Vijito Chatyanta Dino Chiyo even Rupa Goswami, the six Goswamis, they were chanting fixed number of Harinam every day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Rupa Goswami would chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, and faint in ecstasy. And then when he woke up again, then he would say, oh, I've not finished my rounds. <laughs> so if, that's okay. If you don't finish your rounds because in your Siddha Deya you went to Goloka Vrindavan and you were serving Radha Krishna all day, then don't panic. <laughs> but otherwise, you should panic. <laughs> Try to complete your rounds every day. So, follow all Vaidhi Bhakti outwardly and inwardly, secretly. One should remember and serve according to one's level of qualification. Mainly, to be honest, 99.999999% of the devotees are not qualified for Raghunuga Bhakti. But, you know, you can remember how the devotees who are qualified are doing bhakti. Just like the other day we described the meaning of the song of Mangalarti. Hmm? So though one may not be qualified to remember that's how Radha Krishna waking up in the morning. But when you are singing this, you should think that the author of the song, that is our Srila Bhakti Pradhan Kesh Goswami, he is singing this song and you can remember how he is remembering Radha and Krishna. So if you remember how Rupa Goswami is doing bhajan, Sanatana Goswami, how our acharyas are doing bhajan, and give pranam to them from very far away. Oh, when will I be able to follow in their footsteps? Gradually, gradually, don't reach up. But if you be very humble and with the greatest honor, remember those who are in Ragamark, gradually the qualification will come to you. So this is the first meaning. Now the second meaning. This is expressing the superiority of Parakya Bhav. It's a special contribution of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Before Mahaprabhu had, was revealing this and through it the Goswamis, then this Parakya Bhav was practically unknown. Parakya Bhav means a person 
They may worship Radha and Krishna as if they are husband and wife living together in Nandaga. That is called Swakya, married mood. But, and that is there in Golok. There's a planet, Krishna Lok, and it has so many dimensions. So the outer aspect of that planet, the Vaibhava of that planet, is called Golok, where Radha and Krishna are living together happily in an accepted married relationship. So, by Vaidhi Bhakti, one may attain their service. Within that planet, there's another level, which is higher, and that is Dwarka. And within that, there's another level, which is higher, that is Mathura. And then within, the Antar Mandal, Golok is the Bahir Mandal, but the Antar Mandal, the innermost confidential region, is called Braj, Gokul, or Vrindavan. So that is the Goloka Vrindavan. That means the Goloka Stitta Vrindavan, the Vrindavan which is situated within the Goloka planet, which is the most confidential destination, only attained by the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And there, is the Parakya above the mood that Radhika is married to Abhimanyu and lives in Javat with her mother-in-law Jatila and sister-in-law Kutila hmm? and she has to sneak out of the house and she can only secretly meet with Krishna and then she has to return again hiding the evidence at every step so that is the Parakya Bhav that is also called Ujjwala Rasa and he's only in Braja. So every morning when we do Parakrama of Tulsi, you should think that in, you should do in your mind Brajmano Parakrama in your mind. Because you got all the places you go to, go Peshwa, Mahadev, Nandaga, everywhere. So in the morning you are doing Parakrama. So in that song we say, Jaya Jai Ujwala Rasa. Oh, glories to Ujwala Rasa, that means the Parakyam. Sava Rasa Sa is the essence of all Rasas. Parakya Bhave Jaha. Brajate Praja. That is only in Braja. That most confidential dimension. So in Chaitanya Taramrita, there it is said. Parakya Bhave Ati Rasera Ulas. Prajabina ihara anyata nahibas. In this paraki above, hmm, ati rasara ulas, there is excessive expansion of the rasa. Ati rasara ulas, the rasa is fully manifested, expanded, and shining radiant to the highest degree only in Parakya Bhav. Why? Because Parakya Bhav has so many ingredients which are not there in the Swakya mood. You see? In the Swakya mood, the wife is dependent on the husband. Like Satya Bhama, Rukmini, Nagnajiti, Mitravinda, Jambavati, all the queens of Dorka, a wife, he gets married to the husband and the husband is giving her a house, giving her ornaments, gold, jewels, clothing, food, everything is supplied by the husband, so she's dependent upon him. But, in the parakya mood, what has Krishna given Braj Gopis? Hmm? Only some flowers, and they're free, they grow on the trees. They don't owe him anything, so they cannot be controlled by him at all. So a wife in Vedic culture is like a dasi, hmm? a, in, a, like a servant to the husband. So it is not a full, actual manifestation of Madhurya Rasa. So there is dependency, there is the das which is lower than Madhurya, the full Madhurya. There is also the fact that in the married life, the love is also divided. 
You can remember easy. D, D, and D. <laughs> Dependent, das, and divided. Because the wife loved the husband and the baby is born. Now the love is divided in two. Then another baby is born, it's divided into three. Each queen in Dwarka has ten sons and one daughter. So that's eleven. And Krishna makes twelve, so their love is divided in twelve ways. <laughs> but in Parakya Bhav, Prince Gopis have no children, all love is only to Krishna. And also, there is some familiarity. Because in married life, then every day you wake up, and you see each other every day, every day same. <laughs> but in the Paraki above, then when Radha Krishna separates, they have no idea when will we meet again, when will the possibility come. So meeting is very difficult, that is called Durlabhattva. The, the beloved is inaccessible and the inaccessibility of the beloved causes the love to be intensified. Just like if there's a canal, water is flowing in a canal, just, it's just flat, in flat plain and the water is flowing there, there are no tourists. Where are the tourists? Niagara Falls. <laughs> because there, there are so many rocks and hills, and the water comes and hits the rocks and splashes, and it's held back, and then the water gets deeper and deeper, and then it breaks over the rocks and <laughs> comes down the waterfall with more force than ever before. So the obstacles make the water flow with more force and become more deep. <laughs> so, there are no obstacles in the Swakya mood, but in the Parakamiya mood there are many, many obstacles. So the love becomes deeper and deeper and then <laughs> breaks through all the obstacles with more force than ever before. So, but you should not think that the obstacles are the cause of the, go the power of the Gopi's love. They're the, only the cause of the manifestation of that power. Just like if there's an elephant in the marketplace and he's throwing the tables everywhere and making a disturbance. So everyone sees how strong he is. Even he realized he did not know how strong he was until he picked up the fruit stall and threw it across the street. <laughs> so the elephant realizes his strength and everyone else realizes his strength by the obstacle. But the obstacle didn't make him strong. It was only the cause of the strength being revealed. So in the same way, the obstacles which are there in the Paraki above are the cause of Krishna and the gopis coming to know the power of gopis love. Mm. So, there is familiarity, dependence, das mood and division of love on the Swakya. That's in the negative column. Now let's look in the positive column. In the positive column, in the Kama Shastra, it is said that Dullabhattva, inaccessibility, and also Bhamata. Bhamata means contrariness. A wife, believe it or not, cannot be contrary, obstinate, or oppose the wish of the husband in Vedic culture. Because he will just say, oh, then get out of my house, and then she becomes homeless. So, but in the Parakya mood, the Bhamata, the contrary mood, Radharani can very much, uh, well, what can we say? If Radharani is in the forest with her Sakis and they see in the distance Krishna is coming, then one of the Sakis says, oh look Krishna is coming, everyone ignore him. And they all become busy picking flowers or doing something and pretending he's not there. <laughs> then Krishna will have to come. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> So this is very fascinating, very intriguing for the heart of Krishna. This Bhavit, contrary mood. So then there is Nivarnata. Nivarna means to forbid, to rebuff the advances 
of the hero. So if Krishna will try to touch Radhika, Radhika, Ma Ma Sucha, Ma 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 Sucha means don't touch me, and she try to stop him. Ma Ma Sucha, Ma means don't, Sucha touch, don't touch, Ma Ma Sucha, don't don't touch. So she, <laughs> so she is forbidding him, but by her words there's a double meaning. So, in the Karma Shastra, it is said that Dulabata, inaccessibility, Bhammyata, the contrariness, and resisting the advances of the hero, these are the deadly arrows of Cupid. Then the hero's heart becomes like Bhishma Dev at the end of the Battle of Kurukshetra. <laughs> so many arrows in the heart. Oh, finished. So love will strike like this. And there's another quality as well that increases the Parakya mood. That is called Pachamna Kamukata. Kamukata means the quality of being very, very eagerly desirous, full of desire, full of passion, but prachanda, you have to hide it. <coughs> Radhika is in her home and she's in the kitchen, she's cooking and she's remembering Krishna and tears start to flow from her eyes. But then she thinks, oh, Kutila may come, Jutila, my mother in law, Jutila may come. So then Radrani gets some water and sprinkles water on the fire in the kitchen and smoke comes. So then when Jutila comes and says, Are you crying? No, 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 it's just too much smoke. She has to hide her love. Sometimes Jutila has forbidden Radharani to go out anywhere, so she cannot meet with Krishna. So at night she's lying in her bed, dreaming, thinking of Krishna. But Krishna is so eager, he cannot, he's desperate to meet with her. So Krishna in the middle of the night goes all the way to Yavat. And he's outside at some distance, beneath the tree. And trying to attract Radharani's attention in the night. Radharani's listening. Is that a bird? No, that's a Krishna. He's trying to attract my attention. So then Radharani, she got up. And she went down to the door and the door was bolted and she put her hand on the bolt and she began to move the bolt and as she was moving the bolt then her bangles began to jingle 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 and Jutila was sleeping she heard this jingling and she said oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. who's there who's there Radharani ran quickly back to her room and got in bed Krishna can hear oh Jutila woke up we have to wait. Now Krishna's waiting. Another 20 minutes he's waiting outside in the dark. <laughs> waiting for Tudila to go back to sleep. <laughs> Radharani took off her bangles. She's not going to make this mistake again. She goes down to the door. Then she gets the, the bolt and... Well, no. who, who, who's there? Who's there? The mother in law makes a sound again. Right, right, he quickly runs back and gets him. In this way, the whole night was passing. And Krishna's eagerness to he's so desperate to meet with Radhika. And Radhika is so desperate to meet with Krishna. But then the sun was about to rise and Krishna mission failed, completely disappointed, with his head bowing down, all forlorn, he returns back to Nandagam. Ah, when will I meet? So this is called Prachanna Kamakata. You have to hide your feelings from the world. 
Hmm? Now, you know if you're cooking rice or dal in a pot without a lid, it takes a very long time. But if you have a pressure cooker, you can snap on the lid really tight and it will cook quickly because when the cover is on, then the pressure inside, because of the pressure, it will become hot very fast. So in the same way, when you have to keep the lid on your love, then pff, it becomes very hot, very fast. <laughs> so this is the fourth reason why Paraki Abhav is far superior Pachanna Kamakata. So therefore, Mapu said to Rupan Sanatan, Oh, do you remember that verse I sent to you? Uh -huh. So this is the in we describe the outer meaning and the inner meaning of Mapu's verse to Rupan Sanatan. So then <coughs> Mahaprabhu said you should quickly leave everything and go to Vrindavan. I am also going to Vrindavan and you should meet me there. Hmm? Mahaprabhu said oh, all of these they are my associates. You should get their blessings. So then Rupa and Sanatan, they went to Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya, Vakrashra Pandit, Murari Gupta, Gadada Das, and Brahmananda Rai and others. They approached them, falling at their feet and taking them for dust. And they received blessings of all the senior associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is also a teaching for us. Try to get the blessings of your seniors. Hmm? Don't see faults in them. Anything. Huh? It may be there's some senior person. It may appear they're not so as learned as you. Or maybe they cannot sing as good as you or play Madanga as good as you or something, whatever. Whatever it is. It doesn't mean anything. Hmm? They've been serving Krishna more than you, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Who can even say if you'll be a devotee next week? Hmm? You can say. Mayuri's power can come and wash you away in a second. But this person is still engaged in the service of Guru and Goran so many years. What secrets they have in their hearts? How they're attached? You cannot measure, you cannot tell. So always try to give honor and respect to senior devotees and get their blessings. And life will become so auspicious. Otherwise, many obstacles will come. So Rupa and Sanatana have shown the way, taking the foot dust to all the Vaishnavas. So then Mahaprabhu was about to, they were about to return to their palatial homes. But Sanatana Goswami Pad said to Mahaprabhu, Brindavana Jyatta Nahi E Paripati. This is not the way to go to Vrindavan. Surrounded by hundreds and thousands of people. <laughs> so then Rupa and Sanatan, they returned to their home. And Mapu continued on his way. But when he came to the next village, Kanai Natsala, he remembered the words of Sanatan Goswami. He thought, when Ma Mapu was thinking, when my Param Gurudev, Srila Madhavendra Puri went to Brindavan, he went alone. Sitting on the bank of Govinda Kun chanting Hare Nam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. And Gopal himself came and bought him a clay pot of milk. So, I should be like my Param Gurudev. I should not go with thousands of people because one's bhavs can only manifest in the company of Sajatiya. Sajatiya Shesni De Sadhu Sangha Sutobare. 
Maharaj was reading the other day this verse. Means we should have Sadhu Sangha who is Bare, senior to us, more advanced than us. Snigda, affectionate towards us. Affectionate here means that that Vaishnava has in his heart decided, you will be my Kripapatra, the recipient of my mercy. This is Snigda, affection. And Sajataya Shaye. Sajatiya means same category and Ashai means Chitta, the innermost region of the heart. Associate with that person whose innermost region of the heart is in the same category for which you are aspiring to attain perfection. <laughs> if you want to worship Lakshmi Narayan, go to a sadhu in the Ramanuja Sampradaya. If you want to serve the Krishna, Balaram and the Sakas, go to a Vaishnava in that mood. If you want to serve the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna in the Nikunjas of Braja and on the banks of Radha Kund, then you have to go to a Vaishnava who is Nikunja Yuno Ratikali Siddhya Yayali Bhe Yuktira Tatrati Dakshad Atti Vallabhasya Vande Grosvi who is very expert at assisting the Sakis in making all tasteful arrangements for the beautiful divine meeting of Radha and Krishna. So, Sajataya Shri Snigde, same mm, mood in the deepest region of the heart. So, if we have Sajatya Shri Snigde Sangha, then one's transcendental feelings can manifest. If there are many different persons of different levels and different moods, one's own mood will not manifest. And especially if there are materialistic persons, then the Vaishnava is shy to even remember his Ishtadev when, because that's such a tender relationship that in the association of worldly persons, he feels embarrassed to think of it even. So the first symptom of a Vaishnava, when the devotees of Kulinagram, they asked Mahaprabhu, who is a Vaishnava? Mahaprabhu said, Asat Sangha Tyage Vaishnava Cha. Sri Sangi Ek Asado Krishna Bhakta. The first symptom of a Vaishnava is that he gives up Asat Sangha. Because the treasure of the life is internal anubhuti, the real internal realization. So to, to have Asat Sangha is to lose it. So we cannot under any circumstances. Sri Rupa Goswami Pad said, mm, I would rather be in the ocean with the sharks and crocodiles. I would rather be in a cage and lowered into a blazing fire than to associate with a materialist. Why? It's not like, oh, I hate these mean kamis. It's not like that. It's because the treasure of his internal realization is so dear, he is not prepared to jeopardize it in any way. So, Mahaprabhu, he was remembering the words of Sanat Goswami, decided, I'm not going to go to Vrindavan this time. He turned around and he went back to Puri. And he thought, next time I'll set out, but I'll go without anyone. Only Balvata Bhattavachari would follow in the distance. But not with a big group of people. If I go on the main road, then many people will follow me. That's why Mahaprabhu, the second time, he went through Jarikanda forests. Because no one goes through Jarikanda forests. <laughs> Only tigers and elephants and wild boar. And so, then Mahaprabhu returned to Puri. Now, Rupa and Sanatan have some instructions from Mahaprabhu. Rupa Goswami immediately abandoned his home. He kept 10,000 gold coins with one grocer in, ca in case of emergency. And when he went back to his hometown of Bakla Chandradweep, and there he dis distributed. He had two boats full of gold coins. And he distributed half of his money to the Vaishnav Brahmanas. One quarter he kept for, uh, with a Brahmin who was trustworthy in case there would be an emergency 
in the future, and one quarter he kept with his family to pay for the education of his nephew. He, he had a very he a small nephew at that time, and he was thinking he should have first class education, it's expensive, so he left money for that. That was a good investment, because that boy became Shila Jiva Goswami Parakhi. And Rupa Goswami, he set out for Brandavan. In the meantime, Sanatana Goswami, he had, there was a lot of pressure on him because he was the Prime Minister. And Nawab Hussain Shah was in the middle of organizing a campaign to invade Orissa. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting because Lord Jagannath is Krishna who has left Vrindavan, right? And who is Nawab Hussain Shah? That's Chankazi. Chankazi. Nawab Hussain Shah is the incarnation of Janasandha, you know, who attacked Mathura. <laughs> 18 times with all the armies. So Jarasan, now in this Leela, the same Jarasan is there and he's got all his armies and he wants to invade Puri, which is this Mathura Shodwakadish Krishna is there. You see? So Jarasan was preparing to invade and he wanted help and guidance from his chief minister. But Sanatana Goswami, he thought, you see, he had a very affectionate relationship. They used, they used, they were like brothers, even. So Sanatana Goswami thought, look, if you get upset with me or angry with me, then it will be easier to break this relationship. So Sanatana Goswami, instead of going to work, he stayed at home and he sent a message that he was ill. But he was not ill. He was getting together with a group of Brahmin Vaishnav Pandits every day and they were studying the Bhagavatam together. Hussein Shah sent a doctor. He was very concerned so he sent a doctor. The doctor came, saw Sanatana Goswami, saw that he was completely healthy and reported it to the Emperor. Then the Emperor was upset and, and approached him. He said, oh, what are you doing? You said you are ill but you are not ill. You are very healthy and you are studying the Bhagavatam with all these pandits. I want you to help me invade Orissa. But Orissa, this is the land of Jagannath. The king of Orissa is a great devotee. Mahaprabhu is there with many associates also. So Sanatana Goswami refused. Then the king became suspicious. Well, if he's not helping me, maybe he's helping the other side. And he's very smart. If you'll help the other side, we'll be in big trouble. Because actually, if you, if you study the history, you'll find that Pratipurudamaraj from Puri set out to fight with Nabu Hussain Shah and he lost the battle, a huge battle. And the king lost. But he didn't lose because he wasn't heroic, because he wasn't a great warrior. He lost because one of his own generals was actually working for the Nawab. There was a double agent on his side. And so his intelligence apparatus was not as competent as the spies and the intelligence apparatus of the Nawab. So I have read all the old documents from that time. It's an interesting history. So he was very suspicious. So to make sure there wouldn't be any problem, he put Sanatana Goswami in jail. So now Sanatana Goswami is in prison. At that time when he was in prison, Rupa Goswami sent a message to him in the form of a poem. He could not he could not express things openly because all the mail will be read by the guards before it's given to the prisoner. But because Sanatana Goswami is very telling, he knew that he would understand his message. So he wrote a letter and Sanatana Goswami received it. What was the message? Madhupati kwa gata matura puri Ragupati kwa gata utara koshala Iti vachinta kurshva manastiram Nasadi dam jagat ityavadarya 
The meaning is Yadu Bhati Kwagata Mathura Puri. Where is the Mathura Puri of Yadu Bhati Krishna? Where did it go? Raghupati Kwagato Uttar Koshala. And where is the Ayodhya of Raghupati Ram? Iti Vichintya. Thinking in this way, Kurshvamanastiram. Make your mind steady. Why? Nasaditam Jagat Ityavadharya. One must deliberate that this universe is Asat. So this poem is telling us, because we know that in Treta Yuga, not in this cycle, but in a previous cycle, Lord Ram came to this world and Ayodhya was so beautiful. But it was only for the period of his leader in this world, then he became Africa, disappeared, and now where is Ayodhya? Mm -hmm. Muslims built a big temple. Then the BJP came and smashed it down. And now they're trying to build a new temple. They'll build the biggest temple in the world to Lord Ram there. But the, that transcendental Ayodhya and Ram and all of his associates, they were here. But they became Aprakat in this in a short time. Mm -hmm. And what about Madhupuri, Mathura? Krishna came there. And Mathura was beautiful. Greater than Swargalok. But where is Mathura now? Have you seen Mathura now? Hmm? Everything became apricot, disappeared. So, think about it. And make your mind steady. This world is temporary. So if someone has a steady mind, they realize that all our divine opportunities are short-lived. It's a very narrow window. <laughs> so by this message, Sir Rupa Goswami was saying to Sanatana Goswami two things. Mahaprabhu has come to this world. His pastimes will not be very long. You have to get out of the prison at once and come and meet with him. Because very soon he will also, he can disappear from this world and then what? And the other meaning is Madhupati Kwakata Maturu Puri indicates that Madhupati Krishna has appeared as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he has already set out from Jagannath Puri and he's on his way to Vrindavan. Hmm? So two messages here. The Lila is short, you must escape at once. Second one, Mahaprabhu is on his way to Vrindavan. Go and meet him there. So when Sanatana Goswami received this message, he immediately made a plan how to escape. He called the jailer. He said, oh my dear prison officer, I am an innocent person. So if you are set free, an innocent person, then Allah will set you free. <laughs> and you will attain salvation. Hmm? The God said, I'll get in trouble for this. The, the, the devil will kill me. He said, look, no one will know anything. I'll go to Makkah Medina. I'll go on a pilgrimage to Mecca. So this is a pious activity. And because you facilitate this pious activity, you will get the benefit. I can't do it. Sanatan Goswami, now remember Rupa Goswami kept some money for him. He said, I'll give you 5,000 gold coins. Then he said, oh. But he was very tempted. Sanatan Goswami said, look, you take me out to go to the toilet in my chains. And you say that when I, after using the toilet, I went to the river to wash and I jumped in the river with the chains on and sank. And you can call everyone, help, 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 and all people
people will come and they'll jump in the river and they'll search for me and they won't be able to find me. And then they'll go to the king and say, oh, it's a disaster. Sakar Malik has drowned. And everyone will tell this, not just you, everyone will tell. And so because it's coming from so many directions, the king won't understand that you were responsible. You see, because if you hear the story from many people, it sounds convincing. Hmm? Okay. That's why you, they manipulate the algorithms on social media, right? To make it look like everyone's saying the same thing, right? So that's how you control some of it, where everyone says it. 90% of the people believe. So, Sanatana Goswami is very expert in diplomacy and politics. And so he explained this plan to the prison guard. And Sanatana Goswami said, look, you owe me a favor. I'm the one who got you this job. Because before he was the prime minister and he appointed him as in charge of the prison. So, so you owe me a favor. <laughs> so then Sanat Goswami, he, he sent uh, to the message to that grocer and that grocer came and he bought and Sanat Goswami put seven, he said okay, seven thousand, he put seven thousand coins in front of the prison guard, uh, officer. When he saw that, okay, I'll get it. <laughs> when he actually saw all the money in front of his eyes, then it was, it became real. <laughs> so then they followed the plan. He cut the chains of Sanat Goswami. Sanat Goswami ran away as quick as he could in the night. And then in the early morning, the guards said, Help, help! Sakar Malak has jumped in the river with his chains on. And many people came and they were all searching, but they couldn't find it. They all reported to the king. And that was so then. Sanatana Goswami set out for Vrindavan and he kept with him one servant named the Ishan and on the way they had to go through Bihar so what happened next we'll explain in the evening one, one thing I want to tell which is important Sanatana Goswami didn't go to Makkah Medina <laughs> Yeah. So, he told a lie, right? He told a lie. You should not bribe people. Hmm? Is, it, is it Dharma to offer bribes? Hmm? And he was telling the other person to also lie. Hmm? So, what is the teaching here? The teaching is this, that an activity is only as pure as its objective. So because his objective was the service of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, though he was lying, though he was bribing and doing things, which would from the point of view of Dharma be considered Adharma, but it was even beyond Dharma, it was fully transcendental. <laughs> so just like Hanuman, Hanuman went to Lanka and he burnt down Lanka to the ground and many people were killed. But, because he was doing it for Lord Ramachandra, therefore it was pure, even all the people who burned to death in the Hanuman's fire, they all got spiritual benefit from that. It was auspicious for everyone. Until today we glorify Hanuman. So, just like a person also, if you kill someone you go to jail for murder. But if you put on the uniform of a soldier and go to war and you kill so many people, they'll give you a medal. It's the same activity, but it becomes glorious if the objective is in the service. Then if you just kill someone, that's for you. But if you fight in a war, that was in the collective service of the nation. So it becomes glorious. So in the same way, what is done for the Supreme Lord's pleasure, it is glorious. And conversely, if you do something dharmic, religious, but the objective is not to please the Lord, then it becomes sin. This is the most important part to understand. If you are chanting, if you are preaching, if you are opening temples, 
distributing books and doing all things. But your motivation, your objective is material for your own prestige or to harm someone else or make difficulty problems for someone else. Then your activities are all sinful and you will go to hell. So Rupa Goswami Parat said, Anya Vilasita Shunyam, Jnana Kamatyana Vritam, Anukuyena Kashtanu Vishnam Bhakti From the beginning, before you move a finger, check your motivation. Anya Vilasita Shunyam, no other desire, no other motivation. Anukuyena Kashtanu only for the auspiciousness, the benefit of Krishna, only for the pleasure of Guru and Goranga. Otherwise, everything is just like a drama, like an act, and it will produce nothing good for you or anyone else. This is the teaching here, in, in the teaching of Sanatana Goswami, lying and bribing the jailer. Sila Sanatana Goswami Padaki